Hello, everybody. Hey. Uh, welcome to day two of our Gen Con live streams. This is uh, our Alter Quest gameplay and product overview. Um, I'm Adam Sadler, as you can see right there. I am Brady Sadler, and I am also Ruins of Arkanspire. And now that you know our names, uh, those can go away. Bam. I'm just trying so. to move this. To, there we go. So it's kind of symmetrical. It was bugging me. So we have a. Uh, Early production samples here of all the Alter Quest products that were offered during the Kickstarter. We have the the base game, we have the stretch goals, the master stretch goal box, the Ruins of Arkansas expansion, the little first floor expansion here. Um, we also have you can't see here we have the neoprene mat for the the base game board. We also have the other one folded up over there. Um, we can show it off if you guys want to see it, um, but it was shown off in our unboxing video. Um, this video is going to be pretty much breaking down the products for you guys, talking about like everything about how the game plays, answering any questions you might have, uh, pretty much just all things Alter Quest. So feel free to ask questions in the comments. Brady will be trying to monitor those Spe while we talk. Speaking of which, yeah, this one just asked, uh, what's the status on shipment? Um, and I think the last that we, we yeah, said is palletizing. Yeah, so well, it, as far as I know, it is palletizing. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's really just a matter now of, of Quartermaster arranging with the factory to pick it up and all that stuff. And... We'll have all those details in the next update. We want to make sure we spell it out clearly for everybody what exactly is going on. Um, yeah, I think that I heard there was a process of trucking to the different yeah, areas where yeah where it goes. So that's it's all in motion. It's just we don't you know that's not as interesting as saying hey this is what's actually happening right now. So we're waiting for that information before we give any more. And Quartermaster is usually pretty good about providing as much like lots of information about their their shipping process. So hopefully they can also provide more information as well when they actually lock in those dates to pick them up and everything. But it is in motion, and uh, hopefully we will have more news to share next week um, about exactly what's going on and when you guys can expect these lovely giant boxes on your doorsteps. So, the uh, the we set up a, an overhead camera here. Um, let me go ahead and set that up here um, so we can kind of show off the product a little closer and give you guys a better idea of what's in the box. Um, you know, just look at all the goodies. Get this so for you. palletizing is done. Um, somebody asked how long are they palletizing? They're, palletizing is done. That that process has moved into moving all the product to the actual hubs where they're going to yeah, be well, shipping they're, out. So. They're on pallets waiting yeah. to be assigned trucks yeah, it's, to different Yeah, it's, it's still called palletizing because it's that process until it actually gets on the water and everything. So so um, this right here is the Ultra Quest base game. Um, this is a big box. Let me uh, go ahead and take the lid off for you guys so you can see what's inside when you we crack the lid. I, I have, we have opened this, we have played this, but I've tried to put things back uh, close to where I found them. Somebody asked, is there quests? Are there quests where you don't draw a new enemy every round? That was unique to the escape with, with the searching card. We'd have to do the the or the sneaking card that kept making us draw enemies. Yeah, you would draw enemies. Usually that that was part of doors. the escape quest. Uh, yeah. yeah, usually you draw threat cards when you reveal a room. Yeah, that's typically how yeah, you there, do it. There's other effects that might cause, like, you know, different campaign effects that might cause lurkers to pop out and stuff. But typically, when you open a room, that's when enemies will come out. And quest decks can change everything. Every quest can totally change how the game plays, which is... A Johnny know. Quest board game. Huh? <laughs> um, so this is the the rule book, which you guys can see a PDF online. I believe it's on our website now. Um, you can check out a link to see... How does this compare to the base game? Is it just a little sitting right next to you? Oh, there it is. Um, someone was asking the thickness of the... Uh, let's see if I can maybe show this in the small screen here. It's like... Maybe... Two-thirds two is two about thirds thick. 75%. 75% is like... Yeah. It's pretty deep for an expansion box. Or something like that. Is there a date for a playthrough of Ark Inspire? Um, we we don't want to play through too much of the content in Ark Inspire because it's uh, it's kind of spoilery. I mean, I, if they mean like an encounter, yeah, uh, we don't have a date for that yet, but we will. Yeah, we, we can we can set that up. Yeah, we'll plan on doing one yeah, of those. We can do some content from there. Now this is the Out of Luxon story guide. This um, is part. This is used in the story mode of the game. If you're playing that, um, it's got a lot of spoilers in it, so you know I'm not gonna hold it open for you guys to you know read it all, but. Um, it's kind of like a choose your own adventure style uh, narrative where you play through these chapters. There's six chapters in the story, and <clears throat> the decisions you make will have repercussions about the quest. There are story cards that you might gain that could be good or bad depending on your choices in the in the outcomes of the quest in the campaign and the story. Um, but it is a very beefy book, lots of narrative. Um, this was we had uh, Brian C P Steele help out with the uh, writing on this one. 
Um, so very excited about that. Can't wait to see people get into so, that. One. Got a question here, off topic question. They said, uh, any, um, very excited for Lasting Tales, any idea when that will happen? Um, probably talk about that a little tomorrow, maybe, um, just yeah. as, as far as, you know, what we want to do with it. But yeah, the uh, tomorrow's stream is going to be the future of Blacklist Games, so we'll probably, you know, discuss that among other things. Um, and here is the board. This is the, the main board in the base game. Um, let me see if I can find the good fold for you. Let's see some art. Yeah, there you go. Another question here. Uh, how long does an encounter take to play? So encounters in the Ark Inspire, Ruins of Ark Inspire expansion are a new way to play. Uh, they, it's depending on player count. Yeah, I would, um, I would say roughly half hour, 45 minutes, and you could probably add like 15 to 20 minutes per player. Um, yeah, if you're playing solo, you could easily play in under an hour, even if you're learning the game. Um, they're meant to be pretty quick. Um, well, not quick, but they're supposed to be more of a, you know, a piece of the greater, you know, experience of, of Alter Quests. So. And something to note with this, um, there are some miniatures we took out. I, I have a pile of miniatures in the Ruins of Arctifier box because I separated one of each minion uh, for the lurkers. Like, so we have a lurker pool when you play the game. That way you have a nice spread of all the enemies in the game that could possibly come out during quests. But those are all over there. Um, and I also... This, we've moved over a lot of content into just this box. For example, all the first four heroes are in here. Um, the decks from the, alt, the Ruins of Arctic Spire are in here. And I think some of the stretch goal stuff, no, I think the stretch goal stuff is all in the stretch goal box. The cards? Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, there, there's the quest decks. You know, we've got tons of hero decks, villain decks, threat decks, all kinds of decks. Uh, separated by these nice dividers so you can easily find what you're looking for. Um, we got base rings which we use to um, color code your minions and traps. Hero dice, altar dice. So we got a couple questions here. Well, a couple comments here. Love the Street Masters app. Uh, do altar quests next, please. <laughs> so yeah, we'd, we'd love to do more apps. We're really happy with the reception so far of the Street Masters app and appreciate everybody checking it out and, 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 t and sharing your thoughts on it. Um, it really helps us out. Oh, this is a good example of how you can box this back up too. All these tokens are bagged up; they can fit under the tray. These removable trays. Yeah. Um, Another question: uh, If you order enough base rings to ring every miniature, do they fit back in the miniatures tray? Um, I don't know if we tried every single no. one of them. I, I, I'm going to go ahead and, as a safety say no. They're not going to fit. These are these trays were mainly made for safe transport of the miniatures, making sure they're all arrived to you safely. That's kind of what the factory makes these for, and they are very good quality. Um, but they're not necessarily made for ideal storage because, for example, if I got this game, I, I love these trays. They're nice, but I would honestly just put them in the closet and I would bag up my miniatures because they're really sturdy miniatures. So Yeah, and, and you always want to kind of group them together. So instead of pulling each individual one out of the tray, you can just grab the bag you need. So it's, it's a preference thing. but um, and, and you might be able to... You might be able to fit some. I'm not sure of yeah, all. Yes, so the, the rings are very flexible. They're like, yeah. kind of like a rubber band type material. Um, yeah, so you're not going to hurt the rings, or you, you, I can't imagine you hurt the miniature too much trying to shove it in there and, and make this it is, fit. But. This is bulks here, just so you guys get a look at, the, uh, at a big miniature in the box. Are there allies and rival cards in Alter Quest? I forget how many we added. We have ally cards. Um, there are rivals, there, yeah, there yeah. are rivals in the, the, um, the Hunt Quest. Um, so there, there are in the game, um, and there are also some in the, uh, the stretch goal box. But they aren't like uh, they aren't double sided like Street Masters. There are ally cards and there are rival cards. They're two separate things. Uh, how much of Alter Quest have you painted? Well, I know for well, the demo kit for the Kickstarter, you painted the entire. Yeah, demo my wife kit. and I painted all the demo kit miniatures. Um, those are upstairs, uh, but those were like uh, the resin half resin samples. Um, I haven't painted these plastic ones yet, but I'm looking forward to it. it. Yeah, we suffer from that problem that with like with games you design too, because a lot of times as a game designer. You don't always like play your own games. You always want to ex experience other people's games, so you don't necessarily always play the ones you publish. Same thing with painting. Like we, we paint a lot of miniatures, especially Adam, but usually it's painting other people's miniatures, not just our own. So it's only so much time you can commit to painting. <laughs> and uh, the heroes are a light blue color to distinguish them from the enemies. Uh, here's an example of um, one of the heroes. I'm sure. Here's a question for you. Focusing on it. Actually, here's one. Um, how many sleeves for all of the cards? I don't remember the exact math, but all that information is available on the, um, I think on the website, probably. The content I, think, the website. I think on the unboxing, we, we listed off the number of yeah. cards um, so, in each product. So like that, for, for example... I'm the, sure somebody has that information available. Yeah. The base game has 446 cards uh, in the base game. And the expansion game. has 142 cards. 
And the stretch goals don't have a contents list right here, do they? No, not on the back, but the yeah. rule book they do. Yeah. The first four has uh, 142 cards. It's already that close to Yeah, I think I had a list <laughs> somewhere posted on the Kickstarter. I'm not sure where, but... Um, a couple miniatures questions, though. Um, your miniatures have historically been on the smaller side. Is this still the case? No, um, if you want to go grab a Street Masters miniature um, or something handy over there, I can sh hold up a comparison for the Alter Quest miniatures because the Alter Quest miniatures are definitely larger scale than our previous of miniatures. Aftershock, which probably aren't the best because those are better probably than the base game. Uh, They're, I mean, these are good quality, but you can definitely tell the scale difference. Yeah. Um, so this is a good example of this is Myrene from the base game, one of the heroes. You can tell she's uh, quite a bit bigger. And then someone else asked um, right after that, "How are the mold lines?" Um, we we answered that before, right? They're pretty. We haven't seen too many uh, yeah, anomalies, I mean, but I mean, as a miniatures guy myself, I I'm pretty used to seeing mold lines on most of my miniatures, even you know stuff I get from Games Workshop. Um, but for example, this this particular hero um, looks pretty good. I see very slight mold line on her leg over here, um, but easy to clean up. So I'm actually really impressed with that one. And then we have another question. Um, do we get enough minis so that we can put together a Lurker AG um, of minis, or do we need to take the Lurker from the, the faction minis? Uh, no, there's actually one extra. Like, you only need the four um, uh, faction minis, and there's an extra one that goes. Yes, yeah, there's, to there's enough miniatures for an, an extra Lurker. Um, you can see here, for example, these, these Lurkers, or these minions here. I took out one of each of these to make our lurker pool. Um, this is all you need for the faction, is just four of each. So we have another question. Uh, during campaign mode, uh, heroes and villains are upgrading their decks. Yes, yes they are. Yeah, you have... Um, villains are not. Thre uh, threats, enemies are in general. Yeah, sorry, enemy upgrades, right, yeah. Not not a, not a single, because you don't always play this against the same villain, so you're just upgrading enemies in general, so. The enemy upgrade cards are kind of universal, like, oh, this here, you know, enemies get plus this much health or plus as much defense or they get this ability um it's very uh, universal to all the enemies in the campaign so um another question here is the card tray separate piece uh, yes. yes just to show that right now yep yeah i actually got to that point there but also um they mentioned about it is getting... also deep enough for the dividers as well. yeah that's what i was going to say because they mentioned getting rid of the trays and just bagging the minis which you can do, but the nice thing about keeping the trays, even if you don't use them, um, you can at least like make shift your own way. But like they hold up the board very well on top of the cards. And so. also, there is a you can take the the stretch goal tray. It's also the same thing. It's removable. Yeah, you put it so right you here, put so. there, and it'll balance both of them. You can make it use of the what do you call it two support legs or whatever. And then you can see here the uh, all the doors fit in here. Let me take the lid off so it's not so shiny. I'm not sure if you can answer this one, Adam. Um, how sturdy is the plastic for the removal of mold lines? Mantic, uh, re Mantic resin. Resin is. Or no, so Ma Mantic resin bad. I think he said resin. This is rustic, but Mantic rustic bad. I'm guessing resin or GW well, plastic rustic good. Is, rustic is a type of. Oh, material. rustic is okay. Yeah, yeah so but, yeah. but it is. You can answer that. <laughs> in my, I, I've had some experience with some of Mantic solder miniatures, and I've had that issue as well. Um, these right here are like a oh, quick comment to someone mentioned the camera does not focus on close-ups it says oh, okay is I was wondering about that does this one it looks it looks okay here but not because I'm it's a little it's bit probably like too close I'm, I'm it's like an autofocus thing so anyway back to the uh, the mold lines thing I guess yeah they're pretty easy to clean up um, I will do some test runs and let and give you an update but these look very similar to other board game miniatures that I've messed with before um hold that guy up there i mean if i hold my hand there it might focus better i don't know and then we have a it came out really cool looking a question about uh how long or how many missions is a campaign six um, yeah typically six uh whoops comments went away there we go yeah, six missions. Um, so, I mean, that's... But also, um, the stories, there, there's flexibility there. It just so happens that the stories we have so far are both six as well. But as more content gets released, those, you know, those could... 
depending on how much content we do, you know, in the future for Alter Quest, those can expand to a higher level. Yeah, we, we generally just like, we prefer um, shorter campaigns ourselves just so we can finish them. Um, that's kind of, I, I think Alter Quest really shines in the, just the random one-off design. Um, but we know that the, the campaign play is a desire, is something people want. So we definitely have that option there. So, and the question, oh, uh, so, um... Crack put, put your hand behind the mini to help the camera focus. Somebody said, "Yeah, that's what, that's um, what I was trying." Yeah, these are probably just delayed from from your. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and crack open the stretch goals too, so you guys can see what's all in there. Uh, an honest answer, please. Is Street Master still number one for you, Brady, or is Alter Quest better? <laughs> well, that's it's one of those things where it's, it depends on. I think hour. I think Hour of Need is his number well, one. Well, yeah, number, <laughs> Hour of Need is my number one game. Uh, hour of Need and Contra are close competitors for my favorite game we've designed recently. Um, but as far as like what I prefer over you know Street Masters versus Alter Quest, it's one of those things where it depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Street Masters um, has the it has the zoom like the really quick playing solo aspect. Um, time wise, you're gonna be looking at the same thing. Alter Quest is a little more setup, um, but it's a much more of an epic experience. So it all depends on the mood, I guess. But I mean, I'm a sucker for fantasy. I think I like fantasy more than I like video game uh, you know tropes like uh, Street Masters, but. Um, but it all depends on the mood I'm in, I guess. <laughs> the rule sheet here for the stretch goals is really kind of just a, com a com content list, but there's 417 cards uh, in the stretch goals. Um, Have you sent a copy of or a copy to the YouTube Bard? I think he didn't wasn't impressed with the video. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I think we reached out to him during the Kickstarter, um, but yeah, I don't. I don't We'll try again now that the game's coming out. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he. I don't think he like looks for solicitations. Um, but but yeah, I'm more than happy to send him his we way. We do enjoy. We do enjoy that video. Yeah. Um, the best thing about HeroQuest. Yeah, we're, is we're HeroQuest fans his for video, sure. So. Um, and here are I, I put some extra hero dice in here that we had left over from the demo kit. Um, there's an extra set of uh, base rings from the stretch goals because that is for the trap miniatures that we unlocked in the Kickstarter. So. Typically, when you play the game, uh, you use these trap tokens when traps are spawned. Um, but in the stretch goals, we unlocked miniatures for all the factions. I'm pretty sure all the factions we unlocked had trap miniatures now. Um, so those are in here as well. Uh, uh, and all the, the cards uh, with dividers. So I miniatures. Can, somebody asked, so I can use the card trays, put the maps on them, and then the miniatures, right? Yeah, so what, what Adam was saying, uh, which is probably what I'm going to do for my store solution, is having those card trays in the same box next to each other, and then you can put in the funnel, quote unquote, the, and put into the funnel area, put all your bag and miniatures and tokens, and then you can stack the boards and your rules on top of those, and those card trays will hold those up. This is actually one of my favorite miniatures uh, that we unlocked. This was uh, a rival miniature for the character, one of the rivals in the uh, the hunt quest. Someone said uh, now it looks better. That, that might looks, be delayed. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, probably, it's probably delayed. Um, but yeah, he uh, he just he just replaces one of the rival tokens. But I just love that sculpt. I like crazy fanatical religious zealots. Someone asked, "Was Hero Quest your inspiration?" Um, obviously, there's there's the um, aesthetic element of having the single board. That was a very big thing we wanted to do, and and obviously. Hero Quest got us into just board gaming in general, so I'd say yes, it was an inspiration. Um, but there was very little of the actual mechanics we wanted to include. Um, we wanted to kind of do our own dungeon crawl, just with that, you know, in that same vein. This is um, one of the big inspirations from Hero Quest is fracture. Yeah, yeah. I, I love you know scenery because I'm a kind of a war gamer myself, so I always like but we, really yeah, cool scenery. We will say we have inspirations from Hero Quest for other things we want to do. Something that's more along the lines of Hero Quest. This one was more of its own thing, I think. Uh, the one-off design is why I backed Alter Quest over Madara, that and solo play. Yeah, that's I have, I suffer from that too because a lot of these big games appeal to me, but I don't always want to get a bunch of campaign games. I mean, I very much like the option of a, if you know a good one-off game that has the option of campaign plays. So that's why this was uh, modeled that way. It's one of the more controversial heroes, the Van Geyser. Um, hero. Any chance of doing supplemental supplements stories? With all of, uh, the already provided content, um, yeah, and this, and one thing um, to go on that is is uh, hopefully we can put together just a very basic template for fans to do their own stories because the story guide is relatively easy to put together as far as you know what what you, the creativity involved is more challenging obviously telling the story and adding all those all the different paths you take and everything, but um, hopefully fans can kind of take charge of that and do some uh, fan content well and release some fan stories, but. 
going forward, as the games, depending on how the, well the game is received, we can offer our support based on the success of, of Alter Quest. So, I'm just going to be showing off some random miniatures. Hopefully, some of them come into focus. Um, so someone asked, "You guys use a lot of anthropomorphic animal enemies, like crowmen, pigmen, ratmen, werewolves. Why is that? Because they're cool. Yeah, just yeah, just uh, it's something that." It just appealed to us because, like, there was uh, I think it's the nostalgic aspect of playing games like Zelda, where you're just walking around like these like pig pigmen walking around trying to stab you. It just it evokes this kind of like throwback, you know, kind of naivety almost of, approach to fantasy, and that's kind of what we liked. And, um, and it just kind of came together naturally. Also, you know? a lot of fantasy stuff is inspired by animals anyway, yeah. like you know kobolds or you know just like lizard men guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Skaven for Warhammer, like rat men. It's just. Somebody asked specifically, can you show Rancidian? Oh, yeah. Um, this I know Rob from meme. Rob's Game Table is interested in streaming Street Masters and Alter Quest as well. I'll check into that. Thanks for... Um, if Scotty's watching, uh, put that down. Rob's Game Table. <laughs> this is the uh, mutant rat monster man. There's part of the, uh, Sorry. Uh, Poxoid. Like, so this... Tons uh, of possum people. Somebody also asked, I late pledged for the game, but for some reasons I'd like to know if I can cancel. Um, I think you'd reach out to customer. Is the customer support that handles that or sales or? Yeah, I mean, we're past the date, yeah, I'm not for, sure we're past the date for refunds, but you can reach out to customer service. Yeah, refunds are always tricky. So, yeah, it's it's whoever. We're not on the, on the logistics side, so um, this is, going through the proper channels will probably figure out. But Customer service at blacklistgamesllc.com. Yeah. Um, see what they can do for you there. Looks like the stretch gold box is a second set of player dice. Is that correct? Uh, no, the, those, those were just... Dice. the Oh, the altar dice, yes. The, the hero think, dice, no. These are just extra from yeah. the demo kit that I threw in here um, just because we were using them in our playthrough. Um, but the stretch golds do have these colored altar dice. And these are just a nice little gift for people to upgrade their altar dice if they want colors. Um, some people liked them, some people didn't. So instead of replacing the ones in the base game, we just gave you a second set. Um, which I think is cool. And then in this last bottom tray is mostly the traps. So you can see um, all the trap miniatures down here. This is for the outlaws over here. This is kind of like the general trap. But you can see the... Uh, I'll put a base ring on one of these just so you can see how they... While you do that, somebody else asked... Uh, was there any ideas or concepts you wanted to into Alter Quest, but you just couldn't get to work? Um, I don't know. But, I mean, that that's we kind of went back and forth between dungeon crawl and encounter game. You know, like the yeah, encounters yeah. In, in Ruins of Ark Inspire, because uh, we like the Street Masters small tile. Small uh, we game. love small table space. Yeah. yeah. Um, this game and Brook City are probably the biggest we're going to get uh, table space wise. I think um, we like the Avenue went back to a nice a nice happy medium. I think. These are the uh, the base rings that get to determine you know different colors of traps on the board. So. Somebody else asked, do you guys only publish your own created games or do you take submissions from other people? The game looks great. So we we actually our next Kickstarter, which we'll talk about tomorrow in more depth, is actually um, we internally are. designed. Um, but it was something we commissioned. We we, we reached out to designers we knew, um, and for reasons that we'll talk about <laughs> on uh, on our stream tomorrow. But yeah, we we do consider um, other designs. We're not it, we mostly design out of necessity almost because we want to create the games that we want. But uh, you know, as the company grows, if we have to take a step back and not design everything, that just means we can do that, more things and do more. It's stuff. part of something we'll talk about tomorrow. Yeah. Brady and I actually are taking on new roles at the company. We're still you know designing games, but we. we have new titles um, we're kind of more in charge of product development now um, we'll talk more about that in detail tomorrow but it does mean we're going to be open to more designers working with us so we can get more games out there and also just diversify our, ca our portfolio or our catalog um, so somebody else asked is campaign is the campaign story independent from party composition how flexible is the party composition in terms of gameplay and story so yeah the the story does not require certain characters to be in play or um, or a specific number yeah. you can play the campaign solo you can play it four player and um, the benefit of designing this game to be s solo from the from foundation there's no special solo rules it just plays solo based on player scaling um, that means that you can that all the cl the hero characters have to work by themselves independently, but they're also designed to be cl um, interacting with other heroes in different ways. So, um, so yeah, you have a lot of flexibility there just to try out different combinations that you want, or just play whoever you want solo and, and you know try to survive that way. 
One thing we try to do with these expansions as well is I wanted to open this to make sure there was no. Someone asked, "Is the horse head guy inspired by Geralt, uh, Geralt from The Witcher?" I have no idea about anything about The Witcher except for the the ads I see. I've never played Witcher. I've never read Witcher. Um, I tried art, watching the show. <laughs> the, the art, yeah, I played. I watched the first episode of the show. Um, the artist might have been inspired by The Witcher. I don't know, but I I I mostly just came up with a bounty hunter concept for that character. Um, and Van Geyser has a has a pretty cool backstory that um, someday I might be able to tell. <laughs> All right, and this is the Ruins of Arkenspire expansion. This is the campaign expansion we added on the Kickstarter. Um, it it is, has some new rules, mainly just covering encounters um, and how they play in here. And it has an all-new story guide. So basically the there's the story guide in the base game. Here's a whole new story of the Ruins of Arkenspire, and it is a... A whole new story. You can you don't have to play the base game story, but if you do, uh, you'll you'll notice some story carryover, um, some Easter eggs and stuff. Um, so it's recommended that you play them in order, so you don't have to. Um, and playing through this one will also unlock some secret content in this game. Uh, here are the the encounter boards. This is the whole new way to play the game, where you play just uh, out play out a game on one tile, um, designed to be a little Smaller table space, quicker playing, um, less expiration, stuff like that, where it's just mainly combat. Just defeat the boss. Um, and this is the this is the pile of lurker miniatures. So this right here represents all of the lurkers uh, unlocked in the Kickstarter. Um, there's quite a bit of them in here. This is a pretty deep, deep well where the cards came in. Um, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of cards in there. This is like basically one version of every minion. There's a lot of them. So these are basically all the things that could pop up. A couple of minor questions. Somebody asked, is the rules for Ark Inspire online? I don't know if no. it is. I don't no, think it is. No. But it's mostly, I mean, there's not too too much new information in there beside from the encounter rules, which um, once you learn how to play Alter Quest, encounter rules are a pretty quick adaptation to that. There's just some minor exceptions. Pretty cool Revenant miniature. Is the Contra demo going up on YouTube? I don't think Scotty's recording the demos. Um, yeah, because I think it has it's like pending Leicester approval. Yeah, because a lot of stuff c can change. Um, but but yeah, we're excited to show as much as we can on that game. Um, we've gotten some great reception so far, people who have demoed it. So, um, and it's a game that I just always constantly say how proud of it, how proud I am of it because we did a, we did a really uh, interesting job on it. I think so. This right here it says box one, do not open until instructed. And this is surprisingly enough called box two. Do not open until instructed. And there's also a blurb in the rules saying this is what these are. Don't open them yet. A couple new features: new enemy faction, a new villain. Um, right here, the Thane of Nathander. It's a pretty cool miniature. Can you tell us something about the process of balancing the different characters? Was this a big time investment? And how do you feel about the outcome? So that um, comes yes. pretty early on with uh, with designing these decks because each deck has to feel unique in its own way. Um, some of them not as much as others because it will, some have to be less complexity than others because we like to have a good variety for you know people's tastes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it is mostly just an iterative process. We'll just come up with concepts, put them down, try them out, and then just agonize over those cards back and forth until we have a good balance for you know uh, power levels because we don't want too many characters feeling. I mean, we don't we don't mind if some characters feel more powerful in certain situations than others because that little bit of the swinginess is interesting. I think. Um, and you're, yeah, you're never going to have perfect balance with a game with there's so many different abilities. You know, plus, yeah, when, you know, you don't want perfect balance with co-op because that would be kind of boring and mechanical. I think so. How are the Contra pre-order sales going so far? I don't know the exact numbers, but I feel like it's going pretty well. It's gotten some. Uh, I see a lot of chatter about it. So, so I will go ahead and. I don't know if we have a request about a, a specific hero deck, um, but I'm going to pull out, for example, a Quelled deck here, just to give you an example of what, what the hero deck is made up Someone of. Someone say, please stay co-op. Did, did you say something about competitive or something? <laughs> uh, maybe for a different game, but not yeah, this yeah. game. Yeah, we, well, yeah. Well, so we'll talk more about that tomorrow, but yeah, we we pretty much, I have a curse where anything, anything presented to us, I'm like, how would this work in solo and co-op? So that's always in the kind of the forefront of my mind, so... So every hero has their own deck of cards. Um, you can identify them by their their art and their name on the back of the card. Or, yeah, card back. Do you mean, I'm not sure, Contra pre-order is being limited by quantity. I'm not sure what you mean by per customer. 
um, or if it reaches a certain threshold. Um, I don't think either apply, really. Uh, right now, it's just taking numbers so we know we can get a good sense of the print run we need to do for the game. So, so a hero deck is uh, made up of a hero card. So this represent this has a little rune ability on it right here that tells you if you use that rune from the altar pool you can trigger that ability. Got her stats, defense, health. Um, the purple number there is the range for their that ability. Um, there's a hero card. There are usually equi two equipment cards per character, but sometimes there might be an ally card or something. You know, it might change up, but in general it's like two equipment cards. Um, and for example, for Quella, she's got her Harpy Talons, which is her weapon, is her bare hands, which is pretty cool. And she has this uh, these runic scrolls that let her manipulate the altar pool. So she's good to have in your party um, if you want some firepower from some magical firepower, but also she can manipulate the, the, the altar pool to make it easier for you to trigger your special abilities, which is very handy. Um, also, you have a lot, of, a lot of cards in the deck. There's 24 cards in a deck, typically. Um, and usually there's eight different cards with three copies of each. Since you're kind of hard to hear. Oh, oh. Dustin said that, Dustin Savage. So well, I'm whispering Dustin because I don't want you to hear me. <laughs> Lean into Dustin's ear and just tell him. Sorry, we're sharing a mic because we had like this weird uh, echo issue before, but I'll try to talk this way. Um, Hope you're doing well, Dustin. It's been a while, man. So yeah, there's uh, most most of the cards have this silver border here. That means it's a standard card, but you'll see some toward the back have this gold bar. These are upgraded versions that are used in campaign and story play. Um, if you are playing a one-off, you can go ahead and just put those to the side. You don't need them for the standard game. Somebody asked, uh, I'm not sure if you have a pausing point there, but somebody asked, uh, can you talk a little bit more about the theme story of the campaign in Alter Quest, now the campaign works? Um, do you want me to go into that, or do you want to finish up covering those cards? I'll just go ahead and go, as a, after I go over those cards, you can cool. go into yeah. that. But um, I just want to give you a couple um, examples of cards. This, for example, is an action card, um, and it's got a keyword on a spell, because some cards in her deck will play off of spell. Like it let me, maybe she has a card that lets her draw a spell card. Um, this is, for example, Windchill. This is an attack card, and it uses her intelligence. So you'll see um, right here, it's probably hard to see in this light, but there's a, an attack test that's using the stat of her intelligence, which you can see right there is three. So she would roll three dice for that test with a range listed right there, which is five. So that, that's what that means very simple card effect it's just an attack bam but there's also a water rune effect that says exhaust one minion within range so she can basically like you know after she attacks somebody she could freeze another minion in range either the one she attacked or a different one so it's pretty versatile but again that relies on the uh, water symbol being in the altar pool and i'll do i'll give you one other example from this deck because um, there are action cards but there are also feet cards Feet cards do not cost an action to, to play. Um, so here, here's a good example. Reclaimed Knowledge, this is a feat card. So you can play this on your turn, it doesn't take one of your actions, but it does require her to do a test. And I believe um, this one, I'm, I, I wanna say it properly. It says, if passed, either return one spell card from your discard pile to your hand, or choose a hero to draw a card. So she can either get a spell back or let somebody else get one of their cards to get them prepared for their turn. So it's a nice little um, utility feat. And then the other type of card uh, in the decks are reaction cards. And for example, hers is Stone Skin. And that usually tells you specifically when you can play that card in response to something that happened in the game. This one, for example, when a hero, when a hero is attacked, they can try to, you know, turn their skin to stone and protect themselves. So uh, going, like mentioning the campaign, somebody asked uh, about the theme story. Uh, so... There's there's enough uh, introduction in the um, in the story guide. I won't spoil it here, but it's mostly it's mostly playing off this concept of the area this takes place in Aridica. It's like this continent, essentially a nation, um, and it takes the continent is called Eastony, and Aridica is this place within there. Um, and it's this cursed land that has been it's had problems for centuries where you know crops don't grow all the time, um, and then eventually some kind of uh, some kind of weird curse lets vampires not be harmed by daylight, so sunlight doesn't doesn't burn them up, and and their all their weaknesses are diminished slightly. So uh, so vampires kind of create this empire on Aridica and uh, kind of rule over everybody. And this is kind of the aftermath of all that. 
So there's a lot of you know there's a lot of lore in the actual story guide. I won't I won't spoil right now, but you can read all about it in there. Um, um, but do you want me to go ahead and read the introduction? If you want, yeah, go so, for it. Somebody said you have a nice voice and it's very soothing, so go ahead. Me or you? You, not me. What who would I think I have a nice voice? <laughs> okay, I'll read the introduction. There's just a couple paragraphs here of introduction for the uh, the, the Alter Quest story guide, which is the Out of Luxon. Um, just to give you a feel for the setting, set the stage for the story. Um, Luxon is the, the easternmost town on in Eridica, so it's bordering like the normal five holds, like the, the kingdom, essentially. And Brady can correct me if I get any of his names wrong, because he makes weird names sometimes. So, uh, here we go. Introduction. Since the fall of the evil conqueror Kretsch, the untamed lands of Eridica have turned from a realm of horrors to one of heroes. The vampire lords, known as the Thralls, have retreated to their castles, wary... Uh, wary of their, sorry, weary of their war against the invading Austrians. While the other warmongering creatures have slunk back into the ruins and crypts that now litter the cursed countryside, the newly elected warrior queen of Five Holds, Valerie Wexton, has called for aspiring heroes to venture into the wounded lands in an effort to bring peace and prosperity to a realm despoiled by violence and horror. Aridica had suddenly become a beacon of hope that the allied people of Isini had so desperately needed after their brief yet terrible reign of Kretsch. But there was something more. The queen spoke in depth with you about the fabled altars that had emerged in Eridica since Kretsch's arrival. My scholars tell me they are tied to the slumbering lich queen Sarah, uh, Valerie informed you. They delve deep into the histories to make the connections or find answers to these phenomena. But it, up, but it is up to heroes like you to investigate them firsthand as we strive to understand their purpose. The day before your departure for Eridica, you received an urgent message from the queen with instructions that its seal only be broken when you depart Middenvale. And in this, there's a little, um, I'll go ahead and show you, there's a little box here. This right here is like usually uh, instructional text um, for gameplay purposes. And for example, this one says, choose a player to be the party leader. That player finds the number two story card, Valerie's message in the story deck, reads it aloud and then adds it to the journal. So that kind of sets the stage where the player actually pulls out this card that is the message from Valerie and reads it to the party and the story, the journal in the game is actually a divider in the box. You put anything you collect during a story, you put in that journal for later for later use. You know, um, so hopefully that kind of sets the stage for the story, um, gives you a good idea of uh, what you're going to be doing in the in the campaign. So somebody else asked um, if you could cross over any other fantasy series into Alter Quest, hero deck, mini villain deck. Uh, what would you pick? Um, those are always hard for me because I don't. Li I usually don't like mixing um, settings. Um, but if we were gonna do like a, a re like a, a different game using the system, like a new game, um, I'd have to go with. I mean, I always kind of go with what I'm currently kind of, you know, just drowning in. And right now, I'm, I'm rereading um, the Wheel of Time because I want to finish the Robert the the uh, Brandon Sanderson uh, three books at the end because I never finished the series. So um, I'd say like, Wheel of Time would be pretty cool. Um, I, I just I, it'll always be something fantasy related though because right now I'm just in a fantasy mood uh, but I will uh, also I'll go over some more decks just to give you guys an idea how these decks work so for example we just did a hero deck we looked at how a hero deck works um, this right here is a threat deck this is one of the base game threats called the Raglanders and these are uh, essentially like pi the, your pigmen um, enemies um, now the way they work in Alter Pig Quest people. Pig people. <laughs> um, in Ultra Quest, you pick a threat deck to fight and a villain deck. Now, those can be thematically linked. Like, for example, Gert is a villain in here, and she is a pig person. She's a raglander. <laughs> um, so she would thematically lead, a, you know, a, a deck of raglanders. However, you can have her leading vampires if you want. And the, the story guide actually can d dictate which decks you use for a given quest. And sometimes it might mix things up like that, so for various reasons in the story. Um, a threat deck consists of the first thing you're going to see is a, a reference card for that for that uh, threat type, and this tells you how they use threat tokens. So, for example, raglanders they get really stinky, so threat tokens just represent stench on them. So the more they start acquiring them as you play against them, as the longer they survive, the more stinky they get, and they will overwhelm you with their stench. And so you have to like do a, an endurance test every time you activate to make sure you don't, you know, suffer the effects of this horrid stench that's surrounding you. 
Um, somebody else asked, oh, this is it. Somebody asked something else, but right now, uh, what about the, the mask game? When are you doing that? I think if Contra does well enough, we'll have a much more l- a leverage to get all the licenses we want. Yeah, we'll push but, we'll push for that one. But somebody asked, um, it, oh, sorry, this is a different one. Um, any info on Lasting Tales? Tune in tomorrow. We'll, we'll touch on that tomorrow, because tomorrow is our future of stream. So we'll talk about upcoming projects and everything like that. So this is a, um, a minion card. This threat decks usually have quite a few of these. Um, there's a color indicator here that tells you that's a blue um, Ragot Cannibal. There's you know there's a green one. They all these are all the same. Like they function the same. Now that's not to say that all threat decks will do that. If you know in every product in the future, but what we've done so far is minions function the same. So you know what a Ragot Cannibal does. They make sense. Um, we might do something in the future where there's this is important. Weigh in on that. That or a target. It's work stuff. That's uh, later. <laughs> it's important. That's not, that's not important. Um, so you can tell Bray out and write me for things like that. Um, so that's Ragot Cannibal. There's a rag there's a Raglan Blutter. In in the Raglanders, there's Ragox and Raglans. Ragox are the big versions and Raglans are the little ones. There's also a Raglan burner. He likes to throw bombs and stuff. And also you'll see traps. Uh, for example, they have this uh, feeding trough. And this just makes things stinkier and stinkier. So Essentially, it's not going to hurt you until you go up to it, but it's going to make people, you know, make Raglanders hungry and stinky, so you want to get rid of it because it's going to buff all the enemies. So traps function differently in every threat deck. Um, typically, they're things that are going to be problematic, so you want to get rid of them. And also, when you defeat a minion, you get supply. When you, de- when you disarm a trap, you get supply, so you are encouraged to get rid of them as well. And then there's also, sometimes there's events. Like, for example, this one has Curious Odor and Poor Rowan is becoming overwhelmed with stench. And you can tell that every thread deck has their own shtick, and this one is all about stinkiness. Um, in the uh, the base game, there's also the frocks, the the, the, the frogmen. They're, they're poison you um, with their muck, and then the uh, the thralls have a bloodlust, so they, they obviously want to feed off you, like vampires typically do, and it makes them stronger. All right, and then we have villain decks. So for the villain deck, what have we? Since we're looking at Raglanders, we'll go ahead and look at Gert because why not? It would. You might want to play Gert leading the Raglanders. So villain decks are much smaller because they're essentially the timer in the game until the villain spawns. Um, the villain card has two sides. Starts on the scheming side. So this is kind of what they're doing in the in the shadows while you're you know doing your quest, um, and then. It, once there's no more villain cards to draw, the villain will spawn, and you'll flip this over, and then the villain will be on the board activating and causing all kinds of trouble. Typically, you're in bad shape. Uh, unless you're doing like a showdown quest where you're going to hunt the villain or cleansing the altar, there are quests where you want to go just hunt the villain down. But sometimes, like like when we were playing the escape, you want to get out of there before the villain spawns because otherwise you're probably going to die uh, by the time the villain spawns. The reason that, be- that is is because the villain deck every turn is going to be uh, popping out these cards, and they're, they're just all bad. They're just bad things that are damaging you in different ways, uh, sucking out your resources, just really messing with your plans. Um, in the, in the, uh, the escape quest we played, uh, we were playing against uh, Vivian, and she's just throwing out curses the whole time, and that, those just suck up your actions and you know just hinder you in various different ways. Um, so villain, villain cards are just a pain. They're just a pain throughout the quest. Um, Gert loves to make you lose armor tokens and if you can't you take damage she's all about armor tokens toughening herself up um so a couple questions here yeah um the uh, how has mds evolved are there things in street masters you would change based on what you do now so yeah it's evolved a lot um in terms of elegance and um overhead as far as uh what players are doing for the ai side and everything and you would not believe how badly we want to do a street master second edition <laughs> but we don't want to rush that because you know people have all of their content uh, people are enjoying the game so we're not about to just say hey we're going to do a new edition but there are things we've learned that i i really look forward to the day when we can revisit some of our earlier games and maybe do a new edition um or just do new games essentially like we're like we're doing now but but yeah, we've learned a lot with every game we've done and i think every game is is unique because of that. It's 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 got lessons learned from previous titles. That's why I think Our Need is probably the one I'm most proud of, and Contra being like right behind it because those are like really really recently designed. So, um, and then how many decks are in the card well? Is that every card? That's split between this, this these two, right? No, this is uh, well, I pulled out like 
from the stretch goals, I pulled out the alters and the uh, features, things that go into this general card collection. Uh, there's dividers for the features, for example. I wanted to make sure all the features were in the core set, so I just pulled those over. But all the enemies, heroes, villains, um, things that are specific decks from the stretch goals, they're just in there. I put all the uh, first four heroes in here, and the decks from Ark Inspire are in here as well. So this base game has most of the cards. The stretch goals stuff is in the stretch goal box. Um, but all the cards are in wells, which is cool. There's still some space left over. Now, if you're a sleever... Uh, you're probably going to run out of space because sleeving takes yeah. up quite a bit of space when you're sleeving. Yeah, and we, and we try to accommodate sleevers, even though we don't sleeve personally, because we sleeving for us means prototypes, and we hate having to deal with sleeves with prototypes, so getting a final game, I never want to mess with sleeves at all. But um, we understand people do. Um, problem is we just can't, we can't fully accommodate um, sleeved cards all the time in a reasonable package, because otherwise you're increasing costs to make a bigger box just to fit those sleeves in there. So we, we have to allow the players to have like some sort of their own solution sometimes to those sleevings. And this box increased, I think, three times uh, <laughs> in production with the factory, because especially the stretch goal box, because as you can see, there's a there's a tray at the bottom that's the whole, that spans the whole width of the box, and there's two trays stacked on top plus the card tray. So there's a lot of trays in there, and you can see the box is huge. It's, it's a thick box, um, and that's just the free stuff you got in the Kickstarter. Um, it's free. It's crazy. Um, I, th I think we need to rethink our product model because we're just giving away too much stuff. <laughs> too, too many physical things. Um, in playtesting, did you find any particular heroes who are more adept to uh, certain threats, villains? I know my favorite hero, Rowan. Um, he's in the core game. Um, he's really good with supply. So any any sort of uh, villains or threats that make you that mess with supply in any way or require you to spend supply, um, those those are ones that obviously he's really good at. Um, but there's nothing in there that is you know, overpoweringly so that we've yeah, seen. We wanted to make sure that he, heroes could mostly do th do most things because um, we want everybody to be, you play a solo Everybody's option. Everybody's competent, essentially. Like, yeah. like, like, for example, Cedrin's a healer, but, you know, if you don't have a healer, you're not at an extreme disadvantage. It's just you are have a benefit with, re with Cedrin because he's a reliable, you know, he'll heal you one damage every turn even, so it's like it's very reliable. There are lots of ways to heal in the game, but having that guy doing that for you, you can focus on other things, which you don't have to rest as often. Um, you don't have to go searching for that health potion as often. So, Another question, uh, is the job still fun, or are you working more now? I mean, we are working more now, but it's still fun. Yeah, we, uh, It's stuff we want to work on. <laughs> it's, it's, it's evolves all the time. Um, and this, so this is something we'll talk about tomorrow as well, just how the job evolves and where our roles are. Um, because when we started with Blacklist, we, we were just solely responsible on just, just designing games because um, we were doing it freelance, you know. And so we just designed Street Masters, for example, and we were just designing and developing, and that was it. Um, now we're, you get more involved in you know doing things like this, like you know marketing, um, product development, you know Kickstarter, you know promoting Kickstarters, being involved in the Kickstarters, things like that. So it's definitely taking on more responsibility, but that also means we have the ability to do things like hire external designers to work with us on games and kind of get different perspectives on game design, because we don't always want to just do release games we design we like to we like to promote other designers and get different um different perspectives on game design um and there's also tons of great designers out there so we want to you know get more games in our in our catalog that aren't bogged up by us designing them all the time <laughs> yeah i uh, got a comment here a cardboard a knife and tape fix a lot of sleeving problems fitting in the box yeah that's that's one thing um that i, I never advise people to do because i don't want to i know that like my interest in that is probably a little more unique and um, I actually spend a lot of time in my hobby just customizing my boxes. Like I just get some foam pour, some electrical tape, and I just like to make my own custom inserts. Um, and it's it's not doesn't take me very long. I mean, it's it's not an agonizing process, but I know not everyone wants to do that because they'll spend money for you know professionally made organizers and stuff. But that's that's I totally agree with that. It's part of my hobby <laughs> making custom inserts. Um, but yes, another thing we'll talk about more tomorrow is game, doing games that aren't MDS, and that will also open the door to have better storage solutions because it's not reliant upon so many decks of cards yeah, all yeah. the time. That um, is a hin that's, that's somewhat of a hindrance of what we do because I, as much as I love cards in my games, I love card-driven card -driven gameplay and I love personalized decks, but it does, it does because I'm a big LCG fan, but even I have annoyances trying to store all my LCG cards because they just, it's, they spill over and there's just too many to organize, so it can be quite a, quite a hassle. Um, we have another 
comment here. Um, if you're not considering um, Street Masters 2.0 in the immediate future, have you thought of doing a strategy guide to help learn particular characters or stages? I mean, we d it's not necessarily I mean, a strategy guide, but we do have the compendium, which yeah. is nice. Uh, it gives you a little overview of every, every deck. Um, but in reality, I mean, I'm not opposed to that, but um, it, it all depends on what we can do as far as product wise for Street Masters going forward. Um, because we're, we have, a, you know, we're still a pretty small team with like lots of product lines. So, um, and that one we've done so much for with the Aftershock that we don't want to <laughs> inundate that any more than it already is, especially with other, other products that need to be supported. Um, but I think that's a cool thing for like the community to help out with just to, to compile that kind of information. There's a lot of it's out there because initially the reason that we didn't do anything like that in the, in the original rule book was because we want people to explore that themselves and kind of learn those strategies themselves by playing the game. Um, that's, and that might be just from my designer mentality where that's how I, I play a game where like I want to learn stuff and, and I don't be told this is the easy combination. I'll just, I'll experience it as I go. Um, but, but yeah, it's, uh, it's been on our mind for sure. It's something that's been in our mind. Uh, has, are some heroes better at two player or other player counts or are they all, there are some that are more uh, solo friendly. They're all, they all, they all can play solo. They all are viable solo. But for example, um, the one that I played, um, why is her name escaping me all of a sudden? The, the bard, um, I had it on the Willow, table. Willow Banks. Yeah. yeah. Willow Banks is very, very much a support character. She can function solo but she's really shines when she's helping somebody out um so that's a character who's probably better better off two player i would say um, but again we wanted to make sure that every player could you know every hero could you yeah. know play the game solo um because i hate limitations i hate playing games where it's like you can't play this character in this but i'm like ah just tell, i want to play what i want to play <laughs> yeah for example every every hero in every hero deck has at least one search card like they have attacks and stuff like that but at least one search card because you want to be able to search in the game you can go up to features and every feature that we've designed so far has a search option so you can interact with that feature to search uh but if you if if you want to play a search card you don't have to be next to the feature you can be anywhere in the room and play the search card um you know just to get just to get supply get to find stuff you know potions things like that However, like Rowan, for example, he has two search cards in his deck, and that's unique to him, where he's really good at searching. Like he's just he can get supply quickly, and supply is a general general use thing that anybody can use to get more dice in their tests. Um, so that makes him, you know, right there a great support character because he can he can get you supply to use for all kinds of things in the game. Um, so he's very, and he's also good with traps. So you know, every hero has their strengths. So. Yeah, somebody else asked, um, uh, Michael said, thanks for making all such awesome games. I appreciate you playing and, and supporting them. Yes. It's, it means a lot to us. Um, and then, uh, where did it go? Right here. I lost a one. Maybe I have it. Oh, yeah. When, when, when can we buy more uh, Ultra Quest Hero Dice? Um, I'm not sure if um, we're at the lip store. Or... Yeah, the, the, the plan is after Ultra Quest fulfills, um, re remaining inventory will be on the web store. Um, we have had issues in the past with previous fulfillment companies um, and our inventory availability. Um, now that we're working with Quartermaster, we have very high hopes uh, with UltraQuest, um, smooth, fulfilling smoothly and immediately being able to, uh, after the fulfillment is 100% done, putting up the rest of the stuff on their web store for sale. Um, and that includes extra dice and things like that. Um, so two other questions. How long does it take uh, you to make a good uh, to make a game and consider it complete, ready to go. Um, that that can vary wildly. Um, I know last Gen Con That's last a tough year, question. like this time last year, we were just starting up the development, um, actually the initial design for Hour of Need, and it was launching in like a, in a couple months. So like I was I was like oh I mean we had much of m much of the concept already there, um, and we had it all mapped out. But like the actual design process moving into development was like very fast paced because we we hit the ground running on that one. Um, but that was probably I mean, for when we were talking about the initial, the initial like few decks for our read, what they would look like, that was like probably a one and a half week process to fully design the game from those initial decks. So that was probably one of the fastest design times. And ironically, like I said, it's like one of my one of my proudest designs. Um, so it's uh, that one might. It be was very frustrating too, though. Flash in the pan, yes. but <laughs> Brady had had some ideas that were he was getting very frustrated with um, with our need. But I think the reason why he's so proud of it is because the way it, we the way 
it finally resolved itself and how everything came together so nicely. Yeah. Um, Hour of Need is a, is, a, is a really cool little game. Um, and the, the game we're working on now, actually, which we'll talk about tomorrow, um, that's uh, kind of got like almost two, two distinct modes to the game, and they're almost their own games altogether. Um, so that and the one we were uh, working on most recently, that one took us probably a, f- a full week to design just to, to get the the very rough structure together. And we tested it about a week after that. So it's been about two weeks so far, and we're moving into like you know wider playtesting for it. So 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 some of them move pretty fast. Um, but like I mean, Alter Quest was uh, probably a little. This is one of our bigger <laughs> like designs. There's a lot of design in there. So that one probably took a. This this one was half, I will say this game um, was mentally exhausting yeah. <laughs> uh, to to design and develop. Uh, it was uh, there so were so many, many there were so many things gone. we were we were conflicted about where we wanted to go with it. Do we want to make it simpler? Do we want to make it more complex? Like what do people want? That actually goes into the next question because someone asked any regrets on this project, anything about the game you wish you would have included, excluded, done differently. That the whole process for us was just a lot of. Do we want to make like what? What if we just made Hero Quest? No, we should make yeah. a make a new game. Let's make a new game. So it's basically these two extremes where yeah. it's like, do we want to give somebody a really? We would give everybody this really chunky dungeon crawl experience where they can do all these cool things that they wish they could do in dungeon crawl, or do we want to go super simple and make it very accessible and family friendly, um, light dungeon crawl game that anybody could play? So there were those two trouble. extremes, and so we were trying to find like a middle ground. I think we definitely leaned way more towards the crunchiness. Yeah. Um, it's it, we try to make it as approachable as possible, but there is a lot. There's a lot going on in this game. If you watch, I, I really suggest you watch the live play if you haven't yet for the escape, the most recent one we did. Um, it gives you very. We play through the whole game. We go through setup. Um, it's about an hour long. Which was it an hour or two hours? Um, I forget because we went through like it might have been two hours. It was we under through, two hours. Yeah, yeah, we went through a whole setup and, and broke down what we were doing all the time. So it was a lot of talking. Um, but it gives you a good idea how the game plays. But there's a lot going on. There's a yeah. lot of cards I, I to check. Yeah. And... I wouldn't call it a regret, but I think the one thing that's like always on my mind with with Alter Quest, it's almost like a bitter thought because we couldn't do like two games. Like you know, we wanted like this game plus the other game we wanted to do because there were two games we wanted to make essentially. So it's not really a regret. It's more just like, well, we still have to make this other game that we want to do. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't. I don't think the regret is just we can't do as many games as we want as quickly as we want to. You know, that's that's the thing because we could easily do the whole very light dungeon crawl type family friendly game in a whole different setting didn't have to be fantasy um so you know it's just a matter of like what projects can we focus on at this time um and alter quest became what it is because that's what we were inspired to do at that time so um i think one of the the uh, one of the things that stood out the most in alter quest is the way the features work in the game because they play such a important role in the game where you go into a room and that feature opens up a whole new tactic that you can you know interact with in a different way it's not just something that like in Hero Quest, it was really cool to populate the board with like the fireplace and the bookshelf, but typically they didn't really do anything. You know, it's just there to look cool. Sometimes we make there's it, a narrative hook once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> we wanted to make it so that thing defined what you could do in that room. Um, and a lot of times the quest revolves around trying to find that altar, and that is the feature in the room that you're trying to find. Um, most quests require you to find that altar. Um, um, so we have another question here. Um, uh, just found Street Masters almost impossible to win and being more related to pure chance than strategy. Um, so the I know your comment down there, really hoping Alter Quest is more friendly. Um, I think Alter Quest, there's probably more chances of customization. That's um, It's very funny because we also hear complaints about uh, Street Masters being way too yeah, easy. It, yeah, because that, so, that's the... That's the whole problem with the modularity aspects you can like make all these combinations and you might just make the one that's really challenging for you to get your head around or just the you know the chance that the off the cards you don't draw the you don't draw the cards you need um, and also just understanding the strategy yeah, of the yeah. game where like the, the street masters absolutely have strategy there's i mean the strategy is you pick reese from twin tigers you pair him up against anybody, and he's going to just destroy them. So, <laughs> Yes, but this, your strategy can change depending on your combination of fighter deck and enemy deck and um, stage deck. So, yeah, it's it's hard to say, like, oh, this game's too easy or too hard because there's so many different variations within the game um, to really make that kind of uh, judgment. So. Um, would you guys ever offer Aftershock for retail, or will we need to look to eBay for its secondary market? So all not, depends on. Not payments. sure yet. Yeah. Um, that's going to be evaluated once the Aftershock Kickstarter film is completely done. Um, it's had so many issues with uh, Aftershock stretch goals going to the wrong places and stuff like that with our fulfillment partner, and so it's it was a messy situation. That's finally we're finally getting to the point where we can see the end of the light at the end of the tunnel. 
But once that's all done, then we can reevaluate where we are with Street Masters and how we can offer that uh, content in the future. Um, maybe do like a reprint or something of everything just to make sure we have a whole new stock of it. Um, so it's, it's, it's really a matter of waiting until fulfillment's done for Aftershock completely. And uh, we have all our inventory accounted for so we can kind of take it from there and make a plan for Street Masters in the future. Yeah, another question about when is shipping supposed to begin. So we've mentioned before that, that it's, it's been palletized. It's, it's moving toward the hubs to be uh, waiting for times to arrange, hit the water, and go to the right places. So it's in process. We just don't want to say what stage it's at right now because it's, it's, you know, it's, it's done the palletizing thing. But until that is to the next phase, you know, we don't want to say it's complete. Yeah, we, yet, want, to have, so. we want to get specific information from Quartermaster about, you know, where they are with it. You know, because right now we're coordinating with them about when they're gonna pick it up. They're coordinating with the factory, you know, all that stuff. So the good, the good news is it's bundled up and it's like ready to move. So it's you know it's 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 ready to go. So. It's getting there. Um, uh, when can um, when can we expect an our game? Our doorsteps. We'll let you know as soon as we know. Um, the next Alter Quest update should have more information about where we are and what to expect for the next the next steps. So. Can you elaborate on working with artists for your games and getting the artwork on the cards to reflect your vision of the game? Do you give them sketches or how you want things to look? With the sheer amount of art we have to deal with, um, on, on, unfortunately we can't give every piece of art the, the care that you know we'd want to because we have to rely on time constraints, budget, um, and translations for artists, stuff, stuff like that. Um, and all we mostly provide references when needed. We'll do the art descriptions, so we'll write out what the scene looks like, what the character looks like. Um, but we, we rely heavily on the art team to deliver. So um, and it comes in batches sometimes. So we if if we have too many revisions, we can't make in time. You know, we we have to we have to take what we're given sometimes and move forward with the process. So. So the art is not as always as as exciting and fun and, and creative as you want it to be because it's more hitting those timelines and everything like that. Um, but luckily for us, it, with Blacklist, it's been a very good experience. Um, we have good art coming in. Um, very very little you know issues we have to deal with as far as you know oh, go revise this or we can't go to print blah blah blah. So um, it's not always a pleasant experience doing the art because it's a lot of descriptions to write. We we do too many cards in our games. And each one needs its own piece. So. Um, it could be a stressful part of the process, but it's very important, obviously. Anything you want to add for the art things? I that's that's all I do. No, all mine much, is just writing. Pretty much it. We're we're getting more involved with the the art direction um, on our end because, like for example, Street Masters when we first started, a lot of that art was already done. We had no control over that stuff. Um, but like you know, we we got way more involved with uh, things like uh, Alter Quest and um, I I got very involved in miniatures for. Uh, Blacklist Miniatures Fantasy Series 1, um, and that's something we'll talk about tomorrow about, like, you know, my, my role in the company and what I focus on. Um, but, yeah, the, we're, we're definitely getting more involved in that kind of stuff. Uh, another comment, just saw some more card changes for Street Masters. Does this mean you're doing another upgrade pack? What are steps you're taking with new games to lower or eliminate this sort of thing? Um, <laughs> I, I would after, say after working for FFG, like the, one of the biggest publishers, there's absolutely no way to limit this, this kind of stuff. Well, the there's, game, there was so. a lim there's a way to limit it. We I, I believe we absolutely did because if you count up the number of cards, the new cards that were in Aftershock, and look at how few actually had errors that we found. Yeah, it's I'm I'm impressed. Yeah, uh, I'm very I'm very even, proud of us. <laughs> even LCGs like LCGs get monthly releases, and and we still have more unique cards in some cases than LCG games might have, and they have their ongoing list of corrections like twelve pages long usually. So I mean it's it's just a part of the process because you have so many different effects and everything, and it's even if you proofread a card, it might not be. It might look correct grammatically and look great for that card effect, but it's not taking account the the wider context of the entire game of all the different cards. So we proofread them, obviously. We get other proofreaders, but it's just you know it's 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 a pro it's always going to happen at some point. It's just a matter of how much we can mitigate it. I think we're doing a pretty good job of mitigating it so so far, and and we're getting better too. Yes, so and the, and <laughs> to make it clear, those the errata we put out were for new cards. Um, not the ones that were right, like the the upgrade, the errata pack that didn't have errata on the errata. It's it's errata for the new stuff. So the upgrade pack was to fix the previous printing. This new errata is okay. Well, there were a few cards in aftershock, a, a few issues, some graphic stuff they needed. Addressed. And they're mo and they were mostly from. Because the, there were some where there was three copies of a card, but one copy had the wrong trait, so the files just got mixed up. 
uh, you know, in that process. So that's another thing too. It's hard when you're proofing text and then someone's making copies of that. You won't always catch every single stage. So we try to proof every stage and we try to, you know, do a whole card review when the stuff comes in. But it's 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 a it's something that's just so hard to ever fully eliminate. And I haven't seen it fully eliminated in any, any of my work. And like I said, we worked at FFG. This is something you just dealt with constantly, and it's. Just, part of the game you know part of you do your best and and hopefully we can offer you know solutions and going forward well, uh, but one thing we're going to be doing and we'll talk about tomorrow is maybe do games with less unique cards in them <laughs> with less text maybe. to to reduce the amount of things that could possibly go wrong with <laughs> we have very very wordy cards in our games um and that's that's just part of the game design that we've we've done in the past um we're going to be exploring different ways to do that in the future as well so um, talking about art, do artists get one-time payment, or how does it work for them? You, I mean, most artists will have commission work they'll do per piece. Um, we go through a, a st art studio for most of our pieces, um, and that's they're they're just uh, salaried artists. They just work for the studio, so the studio gets bill. The, the studio provides a bill. As far as we know, we don't we don't deal with the business. Yeah. Side. Our, our boss hires the freelancers. Typically, we provide art descriptions and we we give feedback, but we don't deal with the paying and, yeah. and we, we, like we've that. done you know some like for example the we had we hired artists for the um hour of need so like comic book artists did the hour of need cover so you know mo mostly it's just it's it's a project by project basis so um yeah any gameplay think... elements you wish you could have added in alter quest um someone asked that earlier i don't know if we i, I forego I, we, I think we put plenty of gameplay yeah, elements yeah, i can't think of anything that's in there that's not in there that should be in there um besides just I don't know. Like I said before, besides having a different game that's similar, than I, I think <laughs> I, I think also we've played it enough and got enough feedback from playtesters that we're to the point now where we need to see the uh, commercial reaction to the game yeah. to get a better idea of what how we feel about the game because we know how our experiences were with it, but we're very curious to see how your guys' experience are once you get the game and play it yourselves and post things on you know online and, and your you know your experiences with the game. That'll definitely uh, inform us about how we did <laughs> um, and how, how well the game is uh, being enjoyed. Uh, please get our need backers a nice gift in the second at Kickstarter. We got so few stretch goals compared to. Um, we'd I, love to. We the problem with the, with that is the what's what's presented in the hour of need Kickstarter. There's so many gifts in there to to, to, to as marketing um, as part of the marketing push of the game. So yeah, we that, tried that, to, we tried to tempt people. That value is already insane. Like I mean, it's not unfortunately it's not like you know the stretch goals that these big campaigns will get. But for what Don't people that. yeah, so <laughs> but for what people paid for. Um, on hour of need and the number of backers we got that's a that's a very generous offering as far as the <laughs> I think I think your reward for hour of need will be a really cool game yeah um, yeah yeah but, yeah, but I do hope I do hope that our next, if we uh, kickstart another uh, uh, box for that I, I do hope that we can get the attention it deserves because I we have tons of characters we want to explore and tons of stuff we want to add to the game so alright um, where were we I don't have my iPad so I can't I think comments. um yeah, Dr. Bandits, I think Aftershock uh, added 2,000 cards, and they were like only 20 cards needed to rat. It's a pretty low error rate. I, I agree. <laughs> um, the art for Contra is awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we're pretty happy with the, with the Contra art. It's looking good. Um, a bit off topic, but when can we expect our need to ship? Um, I'm not sure about shipping. It's uh, we're, get, we're in in process now with the factory we, getting everything yeah, we, going. Yeah, we reserve that kind of stuff with updates just so yeah. we can have hard news. I fully is, expect uh, because of COVID that we're going to have like a month, you know, a few weeks to a month delay in, in overall because the factories were shut down on, essentially. On our end, we're doing we're doing well. Yeah, like yeah. we're going through proofing and layout things like that, um, making sure the files are looking good, uh, wrapping up the artwork. I think we got most of the artwork done. Um, yeah, just a few pieces left. So really, it's going to be how the factory can, you know, they, they have other projects that are delayed, so I don't know how that affects our need, but we will definitely keep you updated in the Kickstarter um, with hard dates when we have hard new hard info to share. So. Um, someone else, what time are you going live tomorrow at Eastern time? I want to be here to see what's coming up, same time, right? 1 p.m., yeah. yes, 1, 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Um, Eastern. And it probably be it probably won't be too long of a stream because we kind of want to. Uh, I mean, it might actually go for an hour. I'm not sure because we probably want to, you know, expand on some things. Um, but yeah, we're excited to talk about the future. Um, got a lot of cool things coming up and got some cool things to show off. Um, yeah, and a if you're interested in our need, we have some our need graphics. We're going to show off um, just some, you know, cards and th and new artwork just uh, that we've been proofing. So. 
Um, can you give us a little sneak peek or info about the expansion? I'm not sure if you mean the uh, Ruins of Arkansas expansion, but we yeah we did we did with we busted that, that one open earlier. Um, yeah. So just if you're watching this in the archive, just rewind it a bit. Yeah, when this <laughs> ends, just rewind it and you'll you'll see uh, we we kind of bust that open and talked about that. Um, but we will be doing a playthrough of an encounter from Ruins of Arkansas soon. Um, we'll do that. We'll announce that sometime uh, in the next few weeks or whatever. Um, but yeah, we'll do that uh, live here on a YouTube channel. So. Uh, read somewhere that Aftershock added simultaneous play to Street Masters. Would you be willing to make that something in Alter Quest? So yeah, that's um, that's in Aftershock. Um, fortunately, Alter Quest, you can kind of already do that with yeah, the way it, it works. So. The way we we talked about this in a stream before, it is set up um, for that format. In the rules, it specifies each hero does all three actions before the next hero. Now, you can easily interlace those if you want to house rule that. It's not going to change the rules at all. All it's going to do is change the difficulty because when you interlace those actions, you give yourself an advantage because you can optimize your strategy between the heroes without having to worry about who's going to go in what order. So you can easily do that, but the game has been you know, designed, playtested, balanced around the way it's written in the rules where I take three actions, you take three actions, everybody takes three actions, and then we do the threat turn. So... It, it, the option's there for a house rule, but that's the, it's designed for um, the way it's written in the rules. So I'm going to ask Adam, when can we expect your space game? I'd love a non-combat-focused game. It's like a, uh, it's a tough one. Because yeah, I was going to say, if I did a sci-fi game, there's going to be combat. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, do, uh, I do love Star Trek. You ever Trek. watch Starship Troopers? <laughs> yeah, I do love Star Trek. Um, but if we did a game, uh, we, we, I mean, when we do a sci-fi game, there's going to be, you know some some red shirt action there's going to be you know combat uh there's going to be exploration and things like that but i th i think the combat's pretty important for a sci-fi game if you're going to have uh dangerous aliens and stuff like that which i think we'd want to have in a game but uh were you guys upset with dc having a character named punchline this you just opened up a whole it's kind of anno it's kind of annoying here. because <laughs> i think we the naming the heroes was the hardest part naming the heroes and villains in that, in that well, setting and well it's also just like that was probably one of the first characters uh, that was that came up when we were doing the original IP, and I just kept thinking like, man, I can't believe no one's done Punchline before. It's like perfect, and it had like this idea. Originally, it was supposed to be like a boxer type guy who always did one line cracks, you know. He just so, but I was like, hey, this isn't a character, and then it evolved into what Punchline is now, and now she's called One Liner, um, which is very appropriate because that's like that's almost more appropriate for her character. But it is annoying because it just. It, it was so weird how no I never I was so surprised that it had been taken. And then all of a sudden, right before we we're ready to go to print and get everything going, I see I see it pop up in the news. I'm like, ah, oh, ah, oh, come on! Now you now you do it. <laughs> uh, it was annoying. So, uh, what were you? Med medical MDS win. <laughs> Uh, we talked. We joked about having a hospital game one time or something. Yeah, or I, I'd be into it. I don't even know if we'd have to be MDS though. Just uh, yeah. doing a hospital game. Would be There's cool. been a few hospital games recently. It's been a, kind of a popular little uh, theme, but it's, I would be opposed to that at all. I'm just not very knowledgeable in that department. Have to be like a fantasy. So what made us think of doing the first four as an expansion? That was definitely a backer demand. I didn't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Backers <laughs> wanted more heroes. Um, uh, heroes. Hero decks took the most amount of time to design. I feel like quest decks probably, but hero decks are quite an investment in these in these games. So we're definitely uh, exploring the future for doing game designs that don't require so much uh, design into one little aspect. Because having lots of heroes to play as is really cool. I know that as a gamer, I want that too in my games. I want lots of heroes to choose from. However, uh, one of the drawbacks to the way we do MDS is like those are <laughs> each hero is quite a bit of design work. Um, so, and, and and production costs because it's all that art. Yeah, and not only just the, the art. Cards, I think I think the art is the big thing. Even yeah. more than the sculpt is like yeah, one sculpt, but you have like all that art. Because we because we couldn't deck. get away offering a card game with just all the same art on, on every card. We have to do unique art. So, um, very excited going over the rules, man. Oh yeah, so the go. changing oh. heroes in the campaign. Um, the reason we say it's not encouraged is mainly just because you know, yeah, it's just narrative. Yeah. Like, and plus the campaigns are short enough where you probably don't have to worry about it. But if you do have a situation where you want to swap out a hero or, or someone can't play, it's pretty easy to just, you know, not... They can sit out that game and you can just play the game scales per player. So you can, you know, it doesn't have to worry about scaling. Um, but if you, if you they can't play a day and you want to play without them, but then they jump in the next game, you can just upgrade them with you as if they played um, easy to house rule. Um, but we just say we just say it's not encouraged so we don't have to write the rules about how to specifically do every 
possible um, iteration of swapping out or leaving people out of a game. So really just saying, do it this way, but you're free to mix it up if you want. Um, so had an op- a question, opinion on Too Many Bones. Um, we actually got sent a copy of Too Many Bones from um, Chip Theory, and it was it's really cool. Like Not only just that, that production value the production alone. Production is boom. Yeah, it's, it's insane. A shocking game. It's, it's very neat. Very cute little game. Um, I, I dig it. So I'm, I'm glad they're having such success with that game. And, and our buddy Andrew works over there now with him. So, uh, so yeah, I'm glad. Hi, seeing. Andrew. Yeah. yeah, I know you're watching it. <laughs> but, yeah, that, it was, it's a cool game for sure. Um, Sorry about me keep leaning forward. My, I can see the comments yeah. over there across Scotty the Scotty hopped so. in. Heads up, Scotty. Hope Contra's going well for everybody. And, and just in time for us about to wrap up, Scotty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, looks like, yeah, so I think that's kind of one of the questions, too, I think. So they're just talking about Contra now with Scotty. Awesome. So. So how do you take over? Do the contra? Yeah. <laughs> Again, I, I wanted to let people know though that you know this was an overview of Ultra Quest, but if you want to watch a game, a whole gameplay on the YouTube channel, check out the live playthrough of the quest, the uh, the Escape Quest. Um, we play through that, and that should you know give you a good idea how the game plays. Um, we answered a lot of questions here, so if you came in late, feel free to watch this you know from the beginning and catch anything you might have missed. Uh, but definitely come back tomorrow, uh, catch our stream about the future of Blacklist Games. We can talk about what's coming up next. Um, you know, We'll also talk about our need and how that's going along. Um, but yeah, we hope you guys have a great uh, Friday uh, Gen Con Online. you got other cool things to check out. We really appreciate you guys coming in to hang out with us and check out Alter Quest. Hope you guys like what you see. Hope you guys are excited about getting your copy of the game. Um, we're very excited to see how you guys like it. So somebody asked where they can find this D and D shirt. I forgot where I got this. Um, I might have just been like a the internet. Online, yeah, the internet. <laughs> Maybe Amazon. I don't know. But yeah, I just I needed some. I needed a new shirt because I was running out of, of my my graphic tees. It's all everywhere. It's my whole wardrobe. My entire life is a graphic tee. So um, anyway, yeah. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow. Make sure you.